it's time. It's the fourth episode in my Hegel H series integrated amplifier review from the top down and we're at the H120. This one's in white and it's a little peach. Let's take a look at the back and then we'll discuss the sound. All right. So yeah, we've got the back, variable line outputs for your power amp, unbalanced inputs, tape decks, radio, whatever you would have with uh, with an RCA output. Balanced inputs here. I use that for the uh, V10 phono stage, whatever else you have really with a with a balanced output. Two speaker terminals on this one. The same DAC as the 190, all right? The same internally, the same connections. Single coaxial input, three TOS links, one USB, and your network input. You'll want to put that in there if you want to stream things like AirPlay, Spotify Connect. Um, they're now Rune ready as well, the 120, the 190. Yeah, you get that with a uh, firmware update on these if you've got an older one or uh, it just comes out of the box with a new firmware if you buy a new one. So yeah, three pin power and off we go. So I'll plug this in, plug it back in now, and we'll have a little chat about the way that it sounds. All right, I'm quite excited about this one. So loads to get through, 120, H120 from Hegel, £2,400, this is not a cheap integrated amp, but it is the second from their, the second from the bottom of their line, 95, 120, 190, 390, 590, 75 watts per channel, I've got my trusty paperwork with me, uh, 75 watts per channel, so half of that of the 190 so uh, yeah 12 kilograms doesn't sound a lot when you say it. it doesn't look a lot written down on a piece of paper but when you take into consideration this is the um, second from the bottom so the second smallest integrated amplifier they do is around 75 mil top to bottom when you go to lift it up it is surprisingly heavy for its size another thing on this one size is it's the first out of the line that actually adopts a a normal size so if you're looking at Hegel amps you want to have a quick look at your rack because the 190 up are not what I would call a DIN size they're taller deeper um, and with their terminals they can be quite large so you know on most of the racks that we have Hegel amplifiers sit quite forward in the rack they don't sit proud they're not ludicrously deep but they are deeper than most now I've, I've covered that in the other videos so this one is this one adopts a sort of smaller size. Our one is a white one as well. As you saw with the 190, you can get the 190 and the 120 in white. The 95 is black only, so is the 390 and the 590. Yeah, it's, it's just under an inch shorter than the 190, so there's a there's a relatively substantial difference between the two. You know, it, it is quite a slim, or quite a shallow, should I say, uh, unit. You know, arguably better looking. I prefer a smaller box. Calm down. Uh, RC8 remote. So this bad boy. All right. Solid bit of kit. You know, there's nothing fancy about it. It doesn't shout very much, but it is metal. So, you know, it's heavy and I'd assume reliable. We've never had an issue with any of them. You can drop it or hit people with it, you know, but the 95 comes with a uh, a plastic remote. You can upgrade it, they do work, you can buy this, you know. Uh, but the 120 onwards all come with the RCA remote. Sound, okay. Asking my intentions 
with these false pretenses. Here we go. The the 120 for me, I've I've had it in for a while now. It's probably probably longer than the rest of them. Um, if you go back to my 190 video, you'll see that I was a little bit sideswiped by the 190. I didn't expect it to go off the beaten track as far as it did. What the 120 has done, if we have the 390 and then the 190's wandered over here, the 120's pulled us right back onto the track. It's probably a little bit closer actually, but it's pulled us right back onto the track of that sort of Hegel house sound, that sort of clarity rich, very true sound albeit slightly leaner or or it is leaner than the 190 because the 190 is quite bombastic it's quite full on um which which you know I, I personally like this is a more a more serious sound and amplifier which you know considering the price point and considering what, what you're looking for i suppose you would expect the more serious amplifier to be the more expensive of the two but uh this is I have to be careful here because it isn't it doesn't lose out on fun it's a great thing to listen to it's just that the 190 focuses almost everything on fun you know uh, the 120 takes things a little bit more seriously so I've broken it down as usual into the three sort of bandwidths just bass mid and higher frequency um, and I'll talk to you about what I find with those in particular and their relationship with one another so bass bass is uh you know taut fast and precise which is exactly what i would expect from 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 any two and a half thousand pound amplifier uh, but specifically a hegel amplifier it's a, it's a large characteristic of hegel amplifiers is that sort of grip the speed that it has down in the bass and this has it in the bucket load so bearing in mind these are the same things i'm saying for a ten thousand pound amplifier a five thousand pound amplifier and this two and a half thousand pound amplifier or two thousand four hundred pounds but we'll get to what i think about its its price point towards the end <clears throat> grip beyond its suggested power it doesn't struggle playing low so remember what i was saying earlier about it's 75 watts and it being half of that of the 190 and half of that gain of the 390 you in my opinion, you may as well throw them numbers out of the door. They're, they're just, you know, this has grip for days. It'll play low, so it, it knows how to dig deep. And it's likely to do more so with its damping factor than it is to do with its power output. It's deceptive as well in the its volume knob. I'd have to check this because I don't know, but its volume knob seems to have a little more gain on. So at 55 you're playing at what you would expect at 70 from the 190 and stuff like that. So I think it might have a slightly livelier gain relationship between the volume knob and the actual, you know, power output. So I'd, I'd have to, I can't, you know, I, I can't put that on record because I don't know, but it's, uh, it would seem like that to me. It seems like, you know, the majority of Hegel amplifiers, you can get them right up before you get to loud, you know, the sort of 85s and the 90s. Whereas this, uh, during all of my reviewing and listening, I don't think I've been bar beyond the, the the 65 mark, really. And I like to play things loud from time to time. I certainly like to turn things up to test them as well. Uh, more, more so on the speaker front, but the, um, yeah, 65 is loud with the, with the 120. So, um, which, you know, again, I'm getting off track a little bit, but again, another side note I made was it's good for quiet listening. It's good for the sort of late night stuff. It doesn't seem to be dynamically dead uh, when you're when you're at lower volumes. And it also, like I was saying about the relationship between the volume and the power output, you know, 20 to 30 isn't inaudible. You can you can hear it, it's nice, and it's still tonally rich at that volume, you know. A lot of things, a lot of products dull down at lower volumes, but this one's quite nice. So anyway, back onto bass. Bass can be a little bit more square in comparison to the 390, okay? So, again, comparing it to an amplifier that's twice its price, rightfully, 
the base from the 390 should be richer, it should be wider, more full. Um, this, um, the 120 in comparison, can be a little bit more boxed off. There are fewer pixels in, uh, or fewer sonic pixels in the picture when it comes to bass. Comparatively speaking, it's not doing a bad job at all. Um, yeah, the 390 is a, is a weapon in that regard. But there aren't many amps that can touch it. So it doesn't have the right to be anywhere near it and it, um, it gets closer than it deserves to, you know? So um, yeah, my two word summary for the bass is rich and powerful. There's plenty of power on tap. Ignore the numbers, you know, you can be you can be fooled by them and it can cause a bit of psychoacoustics when you go and listen to a low numbered amplifier in terms of its power you will already expect it to sound a certain way but this 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 doesn't sound like that or it may surprise you in that way so yeah that is me done with bass mids slightly different story with the mids this is uh, this amplifier has varying skill sets across the bandwidth so you know a lot of a lot of products are quite linear they have very similar sonic signatures throughout the bandwidth this one you know I've listened to it a fair amount but each each section of or each bandwidth section that I'm going to discuss has a, a different sonic signature and all in all intertwined help each other you know so um, mid very transparent mid range not intrusive or forward sounding so it doesn't sit beyond the bass doesn't it doesn't make itself known straight away like some other products that I've heard uh, can can try and fool people into a great crossover by by being forward in the mid range or because because you know our ears are the most sensitive there you know the lower mid range up to the upper mid range where we're really hot so it's quite easy to fool the human brain into this uh, into this sort of clarity dream that um, by by turning the mid range up just a notch this doesn't do that it doesn't plant the mid range forward it doesn't seem to hike the mid range up for me um, it's it's just a it's just a very transparent and uh, well squared away sound you know so um, yeah I've got uh, more resolute than smooth so this gets onto its characteristic so it doesn't have that that silky smooth sort of buttery mid-range it has a it has a more resolute mid-range a more clinical mid-range so if there's something in there that you want to hear or if you are if you're like that if you like to hear the 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 vibrations of a trumpet especially in the lower registers you know you're going to get that it, it's a little bit more resolute than it is smooth it doesn't polish over anything it, it kind of just Kind of just let you have it the way that it is slightly cooler than others so that that is its characteristic for me i would say if you were to if you were to put frequency bands into some form of temperature scale this would air on the side of a a slightly cooler sound in mid-range so a slightly leaner less rich but ultimately smoothed over mid-range this is a little bit more a little bit more jagged and raw which if every other you know if the amplifier made every other driver in the speaker sound like that we'd have ourselves a well edgy sound which wouldn't be tolerable we wouldn't be able to listen to it for long periods of time uh, so the amplifier portrays this this or gives out this sort of rich vibrant bass this lovely sort of um, you know it's, it's, it's nice and sort of airy and fluffy down low but it's still sonically accurate in the sort of in the mid bass band what it does with the with, with its mid range is it starts to it starts to cool it off it starts to lean it off slightly and then in the higher frequencies which is you know w which we're getting on to now it's more delicate and more recessed and it's a little bit warmer in in nature so those two the, the mid range characteristics and the high frequency characteristic blend together really well so um so yeah you get that sort of accuracy that a more clinical mid-range will give you but you get that sort of rich uh, romance from the high frequency as well from the sort of you know I'm, I'm talking kind of tweeters up really so um yeah the the high frequency i've i've got delicate slightly recessed richer than the mid-range which helps develop a complete sound in the mid to high registers so 
that's the amplifier from say that was it turning off automatically so that I know I've been speaking for 15 minutes um, that's the amplifier from say a K up maybe slightly lower maybe 700 Hertz up it's nice and sort of cool and and accurate within the mid-range and then it starts to warm off in the higher frequencies it starts to get that little bit of vibrancy and, and like I say romance back um, which just gels really well together so yeah I've, I've had no impromptu speaker swaps nothing like that the the, the, the 120 works really well with the special 40 um, both similarly priced products and a, a right sweet spot for the pair of them they, they they really enjoy being together which again suggests that the power figures stated for the 120 uh, they, they they may and they you know knowing Hegel they will be accurate but showing how relevant that is because the special 40 is a power hungry speaker as we all know you know but it deals with uh, you know it's it's lowly 75 watts deal with the deal with the special 40s very well so yeah they're a great pair in those two my sort of two word breakdown of of the the higher frequency playback from the amplifier is uh is is warmer and romantic so yeah you get all of that nice glitzy sort of glamour that you should up top but it's never too forward it's never shrill or harsh you can you can just listen to it for a long time. When I say I've not had a, a, any impromptu speaker swaps, I have swapped speakers, so I've had various speakers on it. I've had the Elysian 2s that are behind me, which are really sensitive speaker. Of course, it drove them just with, with complete and utter ease to silly high volumes. Um, the Special 40, you know, as, as you know, that's, a, that's my, not my reference point, but it is, well, no, it, it is my reference point, really. It may not be the top-end speaker that, that, that I've heard, but it is the one, it is my go-to when I want to tell the different characteristics between uh, between amplifiers and sources and stuff like that. Other things to comment on. Airplay. So I use this with Airplay. You can use it with Spotify Connect, um, as discussed in the, the look at the back. Um, you know, you can... They, they are... Like, to, to me, they are the convenient options. They are, they're what you what you press if you want sound nice and quick, you know. And they are, they're perfectly livable. They sound great through the 120, through any any of the other Hegel amplifiers. Airplay isn't a bad sounding thing. It just isn't. It just isn't high res, you know. Um, it, it, it's perfectly adequate. But things really take a step up when you use an off-board streamer, use the streamer's DAC, um, and go into the analog inputs. You use something really nice, so you just use the amplifier as the amplification and nothing else. And it and the whole thing just levels up so much. You know, it, it's a, I was about to say it's completely different, but sonically it's quite similar, but in terms of resolution and definition and the pixels in the picture, there's just so much more information and so much more going on, but sonically it retains the the characteristics that I've uh, that I've said. You know, and the balanced inputs are just lovely. Uh, you know, uh, the the only the only complaint I've got is I wish the phono stage had balanced inputs so I could go from the from the moving coil cartridge balance straight into the um, and just have a true balanced line to the amplifier. But you know, we don't we don't get that. So yeah. Each part of it's wicked. I like the smaller form factor. I like that it weighs a load. I actually like it in white. I'm not a white hi-fi guy. I'm not, not a huge fan of, of, of white units, but this is not a garish bright white. It's a nice soft satin white, and it actually suits the unit really well. So my sort of, my sort of final thoughts, I've put it as a 2,400 pound bargain, which sounds ludicrous. I mean, is anything a £2,400 bargain. Um, God, it seems so inexpensive compared to the other amplifiers. And like I say, you know, it is subjective. The 190 might be for you. It was a great amp to listen to and it was loads of fun. But sometimes that fun might be a little bit full on for you. And I believe that sonically the 120 is closer 
to the 390 than the 190 is. Sorry for throwing all these numbers around. Um, in terms of its accuracy and the precision within its sonic picture, you know, it, it just it's it's far more similar to that amp than it is the 190. Now I don't think that's because the 120 is better than the 190. I just think the 190 wandered off a little bit and, and had some fun, and it does it extremely well. I still think the 190 is the better amplifier of the two. It has more control and more grip of the speaker as a wider stage. Um, it just can be a little flamboyant with it, you know, a little bombastic as I've said. Whereas this treads the line, you know, if, if that sound is what you're used to. Excellent daily amp. Now, if you're a car guy, credit to you for making it this far into a hi-fi video. But if you're a car guy and you're into hi-fi, you'll understand the term daily, all right? We have, or some people have, you know, a nice car for weekends. Some people have a track car for specific jobs and, and, and they do these specific things for people. But everyone, every car owner uh, or family of car owners, has that daily car, that reliable one, the one they use for everything. And that is the, 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 the sort of key for me for the 120 is it is a great daily amp. It's a great daily driver. You can just use it and use it and use it and it doesn't put a foot wrong, you know. It's cheaper than the rest or the majority. Um, so therefore your expectation ratio goes up because you're, you know, you've spent less money, so you don't have this huge expectation. I'm sure you know how expectation ratios work. Great all rounder, an absolute pleasure to listen to. So I'm chuffed with the 120 personally. How I feel right now, having just had another session with the 120, is if you can't afford, I'll be bold with it, you know, if you can't afford a 390, and let's face it, not many of us can buy a 120 all right because it gives you almost everything that you can get from the 390 and you'd be surprised at how close the two sound the 390 to my ears is much better and it's the one i would have but the 120 gives you almost all of it for half of the money you don't forget as well we you know we, we sell these products these products are available here we we sell Hegel amplifiers, we sell Dyn Audio speakers, we sell, you know, all, all sorts of kit. It's hard for me to tell you to buy something that is half the price of something else from the position that I'm in. But that is relative to the buyer, you know. If you can afford the 390, that's the one you should buy. If you can't, the question between the 190 and the 120, they really need listening to because sonically they're quite different, you know. And at £2,400, my comparison to the 390, my comment about them, but that being a bargain, is that it seems a little less flippant, you know, because you're not spending five, you're spending 24. Yeah, and there, that, that concludes that. That's my opinions of the 120. It surprised me in that it took us right back to the, the Hegel sort of house sound, the sound I like. The 190 took me on a bit of a journey which I liked as well. Is that coincidence? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think it just added a bit of pizzazz to the to the standard Hegel sound. A little, it's a little bit braver, you know? Yeah, 2,400 pound. It's in the description below. If you wanna buy it from us, great. If you don't, that's absolutely fine as well. Yeah, everything's below. Uh, it's important to us that people give us feedback on the video, if that's via likes, subscribes, um, and questions, you know, what questions have you got? Please remember, I can't give you any opinion on a product versus another product. If I haven't got, if I don't sell that product, uh, I'm, I'm not going to buy it to compare it in a review. This is a slightly different channel in that we are a shop, but we will review our products. There's many other products that um, I get into here and I listen to, and I always, I don't invest in equipment before I've asked that supplier to lend us something. If it isn't here, and you don't see me do a video on it, it's been in here, I've heard it, I've not liked it, I've not felt comfortable supplying it to my clients, and it's gone back out. All right? 120 got to stay. <laughs>
Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think to the video. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed about my reviews. I don't take it too seriously. Um, you know, other than listening to it and it being a good product, there's not much else I care about, you know? Anyway, I'm Carl. This is Studio In Car and this is a Studio Hi-Fi video. Take it easy, guys. It's time. It's the fourth episode in my me, honest to God. In my Hegel H. I mean, what, what even is that?